sisters. Really, what is the meaning behind meditation? Meditation is a way, is this journey towards our inner heart. It can mean a plethora of things to me through this beautiful space. Meditation is this way of doing that deep inner healing work. It's this way of bringing into our lives what it is that we want. Maybe not what it is that we don't want because so many of us get so stuck up in what we don't want and feeling that anxiety from every day and feeling that overwhelm. And maybe even when we get on this meditation cushion or laying in our bed and we try to meditate, as all of us do, that the mind is going crazy. The body's like, oh my gosh, my arm is so itchy. Oh my gosh, I can't take it. What am I gonna make for dinner tonight? Oh, we really need apples. Oh, I really need to clean the bathroom. Meditation is allowing yourself permission to have awareness for yourself because awareness is where everything begins. Awareness, that noticing that ability to be with what is. Meditation, to me, the real meaning of meditation is this inward healing journey. It's this allowingness to be with all that is to feel exactly the way I'm feeling without shame or guilt or resentment or any low vibrational negative vibes. Meditation is a way, it's of the gateway to our heart, it's a gateway to our soul, it's the gateway to allow us permission to tune into that authentic part that really is everything that is you. That everything that is you is exactly the way that you were meant to be in this incarnation knowing my beautiful soul sisters that we don't have to run away from who we are. And I know as this personal growth junkie and fiend, I love personal growth. I crave to grow. I crave spiritual practices. I also have to embrace these ugly, grody, painful spaces within myself. And meditation has taught me to become the noticer of my thoughts because I didn't even realize that thoughts were anything that were anywhere inside of my control. Did you know that? Did you know that you can choose the thoughts that you are thinking? Just like you can get on Netflix and you can choose a channel. How many thoughts are you scrolling past before you select one? A lot of the times we're selecting those fears and those worries and then bloop, and then our feed is filling more fears and more worries. And that is where this anxiety for us women is coming. I know in all of my work that I've done with women over the years and working with women one-on-one, -on -one, working with women in circles, working with women in group settings and retreats is this collective anxiety, this worry comes from all of these unrealistic expectations that we put on ourselves as women. As women, we are so hard on ourselves. As mamas, we're like, we better get it right. We better be doing it right. Otherwise we have failed. Even with the house, I think of my lovely house that I crave to keep clean and organized all the time, but I have three kids and three dogs and blah, 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 and life, it gets so messy and I get so hard on myself when it's so messy, but then I realize that I have these three massive tornado Tasmanian devils who are 13, 11, and eight, who are just like, yes, they're at school sometimes, but when they're home, it's like, yeah, and I have to ask for help. I have to realize my kids are no longer babies and they can help clean up the messes and I don't have to take it all on myself. And that is huge, learning that we don't have to take it all on ourselves. And when we can learn how to practice us, and this is called Sukhasana. So I was trained in Hatha Vinyasa Yoga. And so when I started meditating, even before this, so I started my meditation journey years before, years before that, it was five years ago, but I started meditating uh, nine years ago, I started a meditation practice. And it was so funny because my meditation practice started with, gosh, I'm trying to think of, it was this weird app and it was like staring at the screen and it was this cartoon and it was like showing all these things, which to me is like the opposite of what meditation is. It's not looking at a screen, it's blah, 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 but that's where I started. And then I remember trying to sit here, however my body was, and over the years, I've really developed my seat and, and in yoga, meditation has been around for years and years and years and years and years. This is something I actually recently just learned. I thought vinyasa, not vinyasa, uh, the movement part asana was around forever. Asana's really only been around 70 plus years. Asana is created 
movement is created to help us sit and still and quiet. And there's definitely different practices, like there's Buddhist practices where they say, empty the mind. For me, I am not attuned to emptying my mind. That is just, that's a beautiful practice. If Buddhist practices are your jam, for me, meditation is this inward allowing, this openness. It's this, this practice of you, this practice of allowing all that is and being with what is. And so when you're sitting there and the mind's like, I have to get the groceries. Oh, my bathroom toilets are so dirty. Oh my gosh, did I feed the dogs this morning? I really have to do that thing. I can't remember it. I can't remember. What is it that I'm, I'm forgetting something? When your mind's doing that, be with it. Hold space for that. This is this metaphorical space. You don't have to actually hold it. You could hold it. I've done practices where I actually create like a container out here and knowing that it's about showing up. So whether it's perfectly imperfect, feeling yucky and sluppy, whether it's it's cultivating this seat or it's my sister, one of my sisters doesn't like to sit up when she meditates, she likes to lay down. So whatever it is for you that gets you to that space, I like sitting up because we do have these seven energy centers and it really creates length here, length here. And many of us might know of this kundalini, it's this like coil of energy that sits up down at our roots. And when we can be this open conduit, we can allow that energy to flow like a channel straight up and down from the universe. And if kundalini doesn't vibe with you, I know some people who get detoured by that. I've done some kundalini practices and I've really, I've opened and felt shakti, that feminine rising energy within me. It's here, it's within you too. That if that doesn't resonate, even just bringing a loving light down, like a streaming light glowing from the top of your head and allowing it to shine down each chakra through your body and sending all the way down into mother earth and allowing that energy to radiate deep into the core of the earth and then bringing that energy back up here. That's a beautiful meditation practice I love. There's there's so many different practices. And I remember in meditation when vis, visualization, visualization, friends, can, was really hard and I couldn't see anything. I could only see black. And I got really, really, really frustrated about it. People would say, imagine you're floating at the bottom of the ocean and all the sea life and I could see black and I would be like, well, great. I failed at meditation again. I can't even do it. I'm going to quit. No. And then I, I have a beautiful Himalayan salt lamp that was plugged in glowing. And so I would do my practices and I would just like gaze like with a slit eye, like kind of like that Buddhist, Buddhist practice where you just gaze at it until I would see that Himalayan lamp and then I'd close my eyes until I could see the glowing in behind my eyes and then I'd stare at it and I'd close my eyes and for me that's how I started a visualization practice I would look at something and then I'd bring it into the eye of my mind when I say the eye of my mind I mean just seeing what you can see think of in your dream state do you have to make your dreams come they just come they just are and knowing that with visualization, it just takes time and it takes practice. And knowing that if you are a beautiful visualizer and you can see all the things, that's amazing. And if you haven't arrived there, know it will come. It will come. Don't be so hard on yourself. Really allow yourself to just tune into what is, to what is here and now. And remembering that meditation is a practice. It's not a perfect, it's not a one size fits all. And there's many different instructors and teachers and guided visualizations and guided meditations out there. And sometimes sitting in silence, like that was terrifying, but now I do my meditation sitting in silence and I can, I've created this whole practice within me over the last nine years. And guess what, this morning my meditation practice was very messy. My eight-year-old was up talking to me and it was like, blah, 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 blah. And I just had to keep coming back and keep coming back. But the key was, as I showed up and I'm here to share with you that for your meditation practice, it's going to be perfectly imperfect. It's going to be messy. You have to show up where you are and that where you are is where you are. And it starts now. It doesn't start tomorrow or the next day or win, 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 win. You have to start now and you have to own yourself and be with what is. All that is imperfectly messy you and know that I'm right here doing all of the work with you. I would not recommend or talk about anything that I did not feel like about. So I love you. I'm so grateful for you and know that meditation, it's a practice. It's not a perfect 
start showing up however you are, have whatever calls to you, and just trust, just trust that what you need in your life will come to you, just like this video. This video is here exactly because this is the message that you need to hear. This was the message that my heart needed to share with you. I love you. I'm so grateful for you. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, thumbs up this video, and share. I, My goal is to share with women all over the world so we can create this beautiful home practice that inspires and empowers us to live the life that we were meant to live, sisters. I love you. I will be back here hanging out with you next time. Bye.